I'd like to welcome Sydney Blunt and Jacqueline Zimmerman, both from Magic Leap, for an exciting presentation. Take it away. Should we start? Okay. Hi, uh, welcome everyone. Um, we're here to talk to you about remote assistance in augmented reality. Um, so I want to invite you all to think about a time that you needed, you or someone from your team needed help. Um, was there a time when that help was critical, but that person wasn't in the room with you? Uh, what did you do in those scenarios? Visualize that moment. Think about where you were. Think about what you needed help with. Think about how needing help made you feel. Um, and then try to remember how you got assistance. So typically, uh, the flow looks something like this. So you might start with messaging, emailing, uh, maybe sending pictures of the hardware. Um, or for more complex issues, you might try um, calls or video chats, um, or maybe eventually a site visit. Uh, but there's some pretty significant pain points with these solutions. So let's take, for example, a video call. Um, as someone providing that help remotely, you might feel rather disconnected from the person um, in, the, in the space, in the room. So you sort of feel like there's this small window into their reality. Um, and collaboration can therefore be somewhat ineffective. Um, this is really a 2D solution to a 3D problem. And augmented reality has created the opportunity for a 3D solution to remote assistance. Magic Leap Assist is an app that's all about facilitating help. It's a tool that enables a live session between a frontline worker wearing a Magic Leap 2 and a remote expert using the Assist web application. We piloted Assist with our partners, Dimensional Innovations. They're a design and fabrication shop that's technology forward based in Kansas. They have a wide variety of clients, including Microsoft, Disney, and the Los Angeles Rams. They rely heavily on skilled workers performing um, an array of bespoke fabrication tasks. So you can imagine the kind of help that their employees might need when creating a building-sized dinosaur for a natural history museum or installing interactive art at pediatric hospitals, or erecting a nine-story high torch that would become the world's tallest 3D printed structure. As you can see, the type of work they do requires a lot of hands-on work and a great deal of knowledge. So it felt like a perfect fit to study assist with. The heart of assist is a live session between a frontline worker and a remote expert. You can see a DI team member here at their fabrication shop about to print and mill a custom part. Joe, the frontline worker, uses Assist to connect with Ben, his remote teammate, to seek some guidance and help. Mill a tile on the LSAM. Is that something you can help me do? Yeah, definitely. Files can be shared during an Assist session. You'll see Ben has sent Joe a 3D model of the part that they're going to be working on. The Magic Leap 2 streams a live camera feed and a live digital twin so that the remote expert can see what the frontline worker is seeing and therefore effectively annotate directly in the environment. This type of live collaborative session allows you to feel like your teammate is right there helping you and guiding you even if they're on the opposite side of the world. So imagine you're a frontline worker and you need to conduct maintenance on this new machine. Um, this is specific manufacturing uh, process that you've never done before. You've never done this maintenance. Um, so you go to the, your colleagues on the factory floor, um, but no one can provide you assistance there. Um, so you need a remote assistance from the vendor. So you go ahead and you um, pick up the phone, get on the call with the vendor, and they give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this procedure. Um, and so they tell you, well, first you have to like shift this dial to this particular location, and then you're gonna shift this, uh, pull this lever. So you get off the phone, you go ahead and, and do what they told you to do. You shift the dial, pull the lever, and the machine goes down unexpectedly. So you're kind of in a bit of a panic, and you're looking around, but you notice that there's actually multiple dials in that area. So 
you, you, you shifted the wrong one. So this was a result of miscommunication. Why is getting remote assistance right when it comes to things like uh, maintenance, troubleshooting, and repair? Well, that kind of miscommunication, like in the example, um, can lead to machine downtime. Um, and machine downtime costs manufacturers a lot of money. So this is data from the Forbes Tech Council from 2022. And it shows that a significant portion of uh, unplanned downtime happens because of this kind of human error. Um, so when you think about this, what does that really mean for businesses? Well, downtime comes at a cost and it's not cheap. Um, so for example, the average auto manufacturer, when the production line goes down, um, they're losing $20,000 per minute and that, that's gonna quickly add up. Uh, so this quote comes from a frontline worker um, showing that pain point that the tech in the previous example experienced. So, person on video call might not be able to point to those key items. That's exactly what happened to the tech with the dial. Um, the vendor wasn't able to point them to the right, right place and the machine went down. Reducing error and reducing miscommunication is the main reason why 3D annotations became a key feature of Assist. We wanted to give both frontline workers and the remote expert the ability to visually communicate directly in the space. Through this direct method of visual communication, we wanted to alleviate the problem of having to solely rely on verbal communication to deliver directions or instructions. With 3D annotations, you can say this dial as you point to the actual dial with a pen. Or you can say move this lever here as you're drawing an arrow in the space. So we know that human error adds up to a lot of dollars, but how does augmented reality help with this? All right, um, so this is data um, from a case study um, that was done by the US Air Force Research Labs um, using one of uh, Magic Leap's ISV partners, Tactile's Solution Manifest. So that's a work instructions and remote assistance application. Um, so here, there, these were air maintenance mechanics that were replacing engine components. Um, and they were using either traditional manual based methods and that led to high rates of human error um, versus no human error were made uh, using that AR solution. So those maintenance tasks were done much more consistently, more accurately. So one thing that makes Assist really uh, unique um, as a remote assistance solution is that it's not just a live session, it's also like a live spatial session. So you're having, first of all, you have this um, live video feed being streamed directly from the frontline worker or the person sort of in that space directly to the assist web application to the remote expert. Um, and you also have a 3D representation of the space of the person in uh, the frontline worker um, also being streamed uh, directly to the web user. So that live video stream that's being, uh, that's being streamed from the device um, that is a unique advantage over um, like a video stream from something like a phone or a video um, or a, a, like a tablet or a computer because you're getting um, that stream that's from the same vantage point as the frontline worker. And that, there's something really psychologically compelling about that. Um, so it's described as a deeper feeling of immersion. So um, people kind of feel like they're right there in this space. Um, so you're, because you are essentially looking through someone else's eyes, so you're, you're quite literally like in that same vantage point. Um, and that's, that's really compelling. If you've ever tried a video call, let's say someone, your friend buys like a new house and they're trying to show you around on like a phone, tablet, um, or, or even like a computer, then you, you sort of have this feeling of disconnect. You don't quite feel like you're quite there. Um, but having this uh, live stream um, in that vantage point is really compelling. And there's this feeling of immersion um, is facilitated by uh, two reasons, the hardware itself. Um, one is the vantage point, um, that, that's really psychologically compelling, but two is this um, awesome field of view uh, that Magic Leap um, uh, has, that's a 70 degree diagonal field of view of the Magic Leap 2, that's almost twice that um, of the Magic Leap 1. And this uh, creates that feeling of immersion, not just for the remote expert, but in this case for the frontline worker as well. Um, so in addition to the live audio and video feed, there's also a live digital twin 
that's being broadcast uh, directly to the Assist web app. So this is a 3D representation of the space that I sort of referred to earlier. Um, and that allows the remote expert to really quickly orient themselves within the space. Um, so they are able to independently explore the space. And um, this is something that's really unique about Assist. And um, it really, uh, it, it alleviates this common problem. I started calling it the camera operator problem um, because sometimes the remote expert, um, sorry, the, the device wearer, or not the device wearer, the person on, like, on the front line can start to feel um, like a camera operator if you're using, like, let's say, a phone. Because they're being told, well, you need to, like, shift, like look to the left, no, like move it a little more to the right, no, I wanna see that. And so you start to feel like that camera operator. But here, when you have this 3D representation of the space, um, you as the remote user are able to point to objects even behind uh, the person on the front line. Okay, so we heard from users that it was a common pain point when they're working on something that's dimensional and physical, but traditionally would have to rely on flat 2D instructions, 2D diagrams, 2D illustrations to help troubleshoot a part. And even if they had the opportunity to look at something more advanced, like a 3D model, they were often traditionally having to view that through a laptop or another 2D flat screen. So users were really excited to be able to, um, in Assist, open up these 3D models and have them overlaid directly in their space, directly where they're working and trying to perform that task. Imagine being able to open up a model of an engine and digitally take it apart to be able to see how it's assembled. Or imagine being able to open up a 3D part of a tiny intricate object and enlarging it so that you can examine all the details um, at a scale that wouldn't be possible with the real world part alone. Um, or imagine being able to lift a very heavy piece of machinery digitally that wouldn't have been possible for you to do um, by yourself. So these digital objects give us the superpowers to move, rotate, scale, manipulate um, these objects in a way that empowers users to perform feats that wouldn't be possible without augmented reality. So we've been focused largely on um, assembly and maintenance, but inspections and walkthrough are another significant area of opportunity with remote assistance um, in AR. Um, often with inspections, it involves moving around a large area, such as a factory, warehouse, a hotel, or even a convention center like this one. So since mobility was so critical to our users, we wanted to create a menu system and a toolkit in support of this. So our workspace is a body relative mobile workstation. Um, anything attached to that workspace will travel with you and move with you automatically. Think about it like your phone, but spatial. Um, often we heard from people in traditional remote assistance scenarios, they were struggling with having to carry around and juggle multiple items simultaneously. They would often describe situations where they're trying to hold a phone while also balance a laptop and reference its screen, all while still trying to focus on troubleshooting a piece of machinery and equipment in front of them. So they were really excited to be able to have everything in one place and have their essentials travel with them as they're moving around the factory or advancing to a new workstation. Um, and being aware of your physical surroundings is extremely important, especially when you're on, a move, on the move. So it was critical that the workspace be configurable. So users can easily grab and reposition content on the workspace, keeping their field of view clear, while also still um, having the ability to have their tools close by and at hand, and respecting the uniqueness of their physical environment. Cool. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, about training. So training is becoming more and more critical. Um, so just as an example, a new employee needs to be trained on a specialized manufacturing procedure, but the expert who uh, typically provides um, assistance on how to do this is now supporting multiple facilities. So uh, they can't be uh, on site um, with the trainee. And so this is just one example of the increasing need for remote assistance with an increasing skills gap that's happening in the industry. Um, so this is an estimate that by 2028, um, about half of manufacturing jobs are um, expected to go unfilled. So that's an immense skills gap um, that needs to be filled. Well, so you might be asking like, so what? Well, 
fewer skilled techs uh, means that manufacturers are going to need to sort of scramble to outsource skills. It also means that experts in a particular process are, are now going to be supporting more employees and training more employees. So that need for remote assistance is going to become very large very quickly. Um, so this is uh, one quote um, from an expert um, that they can be on five job sites in a single day, and that's really cost effective. You can also bring multiple areas of expertise to a single job site. So there's this large opportunity um, that AR remote assistance provides. But there's one other um, sort of area that I want to talk to you about, an another opportunity that um, AR brings uh, to the table. So I'm a um, cognitive psychologist and behavioral scientist, so this, this stuff really excites me. Um, these, are two, uh, these are two memory effects, um, the self-performed task effect and the context-dependent memory effect, um, which are very cool. Also something that I find fun to learn about because it's something you can apply to your everyday life when trying to think about like how can you enhance your own memory and also explains why AR can optimize training or learning. Um, so let's start with this first one, the self-performed task effect. So this is this idea that um, when you're learning, uh, physically performing the action as you're learning is going to lead to be better memory than watching someone else uh, physically perform uh, that, um, those instructions, for example, or learning about hearing those instructions verbally. So basically, um, Memory is better when you encode through action and then also recall through action. So why do we learn better through action than through observation? Um, like most concepts in psychology, we can look to the brain. So this was a study done by Contra and colleagues. So they had um, high school students that were learning about, um, they were in a physics class learning about concepts like angular momentum and torque. And these students were divided up into two groups. So you had the action group and the observation group. So the action group um, were asked to learn about these concepts by physically performing some actions like tilting a set of bicycle wheels, et cetera, um, versus the observation group were just merely observing the action group. And so what this research found was, number one, um, the, the group that was the action group that were physically performing these actions uh, were much better um, on a memory recall task than the observation group. And then um, what you see here, these are fMRI scans, functional magnetic resonance imaging scans of the students' uh, brains. And what you're seeing in color is the neural activation difference between the action group and the observation group. So um, the, the, the color is where you have higher activation in the action group than the observation group. And so these are areas of the brain that are um, motor and sensory related. And so just to point out, so this obviously happens during learning, but what's interesting is that this also happens when people are thinking about these concepts later on, so during recall. So that memory becomes inextricably tied to that action later on as well. All right, so um, AR can optimize training not, it all, not only because it provides this opportunity for hands-on learning, but also because it allows um, learning to happen in the field um, or in context. Um, it's referred to in cognitive psychology as this context-dependent memory effect. So um, learning in context in AR can dramatically reduce training time. So um, this is data from a tactile manifest where um, machine manufacturing techs from PCB Learner were being trained with that solution. Um, and that reduced training times from three weeks to three days. So that was an 80% reduction in training time. Um, so how does it work? Um, so this is a kind of funky image. Um, it was originally the context-dependent memory effect was coined by um, these two researchers in the 70s, um, Godin and Baddeley. Uh, so Godin and Baddeley ran this kind of funky study where um, they had they published this seminal paper, um, Context Memory in Two Natural Environments, on land and underwater. So they had people literally learn like lists of words while they were either standing on land or while they were, they were dunked underwater. I have no idea how they actually did this, <laughs> but um, they, they had people learn these lists of words in those two environments and then re recall in those two environments as well, either on land or underwater. And what they found was that those people that learned on land and then recalled on land were, um, had very good recall for these list, the word lists. 
uh, when they learned underwater and then recalled underwater. Um, perhaps surprisingly, they also did really well, so they had very good recall. Um, but when they learned on land and recalled underwater, or when they learned underwater and then recalled on land, um, memory was surprisingly poor. So basically, the idea is when context changes from learning to recall, uh, memory is affected. So uh, best memory happens when you can as closely match um, your environment at learning to your environment at recall. Um, and you can sort of think about how to apply this anywhere in your life, um, not just online or underwater, but as closely matching that environment leads to the best uh, training and the best memory. Um, so that means that frontline workers learn best in the exact same context as they're going to be performing these actions. And that's right there on the factory floor. And um, AR remote assistance provides the opportunity for remote experts to come in and provide that assistance right there, um, improving training um, and, and, uh, and memory. So I want to, as we sort of embark on this journey of AR remote assistance, um, I just wanted to leave you with these words from Benjamin Franklin. So tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, um, involve me and then I will learn best. So we invite you to think about Magic Leap Assist as another tool on your workbench. It's a tool for help, it's a tool for collaboration, and it's a training tool that utilizes scientifically proven ways of learning. Um, but most importantly, it's a tool for empowering workers and empowering each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone. And I know you have a great booth in the exhibit hall that I checked out. Really cool booth. You can't miss it right when you walk in. So yeah. I'm sure you guys will be there. Come join us. Well, I'll be there all afternoon and tomorrow morning. So if you have any questions, feel free to come by. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.